Welcome back to another lecture uh, for solar energy conversion systems. I'm building off of the last lecture of uh, time and space relationships. And when we left off, we were uh, beginning to talk about the hour angle and how we calculate the hour angle as a process of, of solving for problems. Now, the interesting thing here, and it's really going to carry over into the lecture materials uh, following, is that the hour angle, again, is not really something that you see. It is an angular relation of time. And about the best I can do, again, is to say, imagine you're standing outside and, you, and you're facing towards the equator. Let's say you're facing south in the northern hemisphere. And you look up and you imagine the zenith of the sky is right over the top of you and the, a line splitting down north to south. If you had an imaginary line splitting north to south, that would be a meridian. And that meridian defines the zero angle of time in your local space. So our angle is zero as the sun intersects that meridian, that local meridian. And if, if the time of the day were earlier in the day, let's say one hour before the sun hits solar noon at 11 o'clock solar time, that would be minus 15 degrees because the way that we define an hour angle is 15 degrees for every hour of change. And the equations that we have here are represented in the textbook in Chapter 6 of Solar Energy Conversion Systems, uh, 6.4 and 6.5. And they're essentially the same content. It's just, are we solving for the hour angle? In which case, I have 15 degrees per hour. That's my degree-based to hour-based conversion times the time, T sol, and so, T sol, the time, solar time, would be listed in, in decimal time, and uh, one would say in, in 24-hour clock format. So 230 would be represented as 1430 and then converted into decimal format as 14.5, okay? And 6.3, if I were solving for T-Sol, I would take the hour angle, then multiply that by one hour per 15 degrees, flipping the units around, plus 12 hours uh, to make the correction for hour angle. Okay? And what we see here is that uh, we've got this idea that uh, time can be represented as an angle, and it's going to, indeed it's going to need to be represented as an angle in all of our simulation solvers, uh, such as System Advisor Model from National Renewable Energy Lab, or Google Maps, or GIS programs, and all of these things, they all work off of an angular relationship for time. And that would be 15 degrees per hour, or if we run the, if we reduce that fraction, we would have one degree per four minutes, or four minutes of time happening per one degree of rotation. And then I'm left with, okay, what do we know? out there in the world may be the world that rotates and spins. Yeah, we're talking about just the rotation of the Earth. The Earth and longitude and hour angle are all related. Because basically we're talking about Sun-Earth relationships in this uh, uh, portion of the text. Longitude, right? is uh, represented in our textbook in standard notation as lambda. So lambda is going to be a shift in degrees, but it actually tells us the hour difference from local hour, where we are at uh, in our local meridian, relative to uh, the universal time, UTC, the universal time coordinate, which would be at the prime meridian. So UTC plus zero hours means that we are in the time zone uh, according to the prime meridian. And as I mentioned last lecture, every 15 degrees of rotation of the Earth defines a new standard meridian, and that standard meridian then happens every 15 degrees, and it is negative if we move towards the west, away from the prime meridian, towards uh, across the Atlantic, towards North America, and it is positive if we move every 15 degrees to the east, towards Asia, say. Okay? So time itself, 
I've just said, has a local nature of our angle. You can imagine longitude as we're out in space, we're looking down and we're watching time progress as the rotation of the Earth, whereas time as our angle is us on the Earth and placing our local arc of the sun from the ground across the sky dome. Okay, So the sun travels in an arc across the sky dome, and when it hits the very apex of its path, through the sky at the highest altitude angle, alpha s. That's when we're going to have solar noon. So alpha s, alpha subscript s is the solar altitude angle. When that solar altitude angle reaches its highest value for the day, and remember because of the tilt of the earth that will change over the course of the year with declination. When it reaches the highest point of solar altitude angle, that is defined as solar noon, and solar noon then is the basis for our angle omega, this is lowercase omega, to be zero degrees. One of those things that I wanted to bring in uh, is ante meridium. So ante meridium, for those who are not familiar with it, is just the, the actual wording for am. Ante meaning prior to, meridium meaning that meridian, that local meridian of where we're at. So we have language that is truly coupled to the sun. That ante meridian AM is when we are negative from the hour angle of zero. And post meridian is when it's after the hour angle equal to zero. It's just some fun stuff to see, right? Okay, so if we look at an example here, um, I'm going to compare uh, Philadelphia. We're in the Mid-Atlantic region at Penn State, and so I'm going to compare Philadelphia time to State College time. These are two places that are relatively close together on a time zone basis. They're in the same time zone. However, the time zone of the eastern time zone, uh, the eastern time zone is basically uh, the five standard meridians over to the west from the UTC. So the eastern time zone is minus 5 times 15, or let's say 5 times minus 15, or 75 degrees negative of the uh, prime meridian. So I would take whatever time it is at UTC, say uh, 6 o'clock in the morning, and then I would subtract five more hours to arrive at the equivalent time in Eastern Standard Time, which would be one o'clock in the morning, if I were not observing Daylight Savings Time. We'll get to that in Part B here. So UTC minus five is minus 75 degrees. Now as it happens, and this is really convenient, uh, for the teaching of this class. The longitude of Philadelphia is pretty much right on 75 degrees longitude. So that's right on the very beginning of the time zone, of the standard time zone. It is on its own standard meridian. So there's no further correction of longitude that has to happen. When it is 5 o'clock by, uh, the, by the solar time on the watch, let's just say solar time for the moment, it will be 5 o'clock in Philadelphia. However, there is one correction, and that's Part B. And that is that the U United States and several other countries uh, have developed a policy that is actually uh, was intended for energy savings, and which has now no evidence of providing any energy savings at all, uh, and it's called daylight savings time. So this is where essentially what is happening is instead of moving UTC minus five hours, so moving five standard meridians to the west, we now only move four standard meridians to the west, which is where I have this UTC minus five hours plus one hour. So effectively, whenever we are in daylight savings time, and that is from March to November, in the United States, 
we actually move Philadelphia out into the Atlantic Ocean, or we do the equivalent of doing that. We move the entire United States, minus a few uh, cities and states, over by one entire standard meridian. And that is what Daylight Savings Time is. Now, why I boxed EST and EDT is if you do actually look at your plane stamps for traveling, your plane depending on its place of origin and depending on uh, what is being used by convention, will either mark EST or EDT because time is very critical and knowing which one you're talking about matters. So if I am coordinating calls across multiple time zones, I very clearly make EST or EDT conversions. EST is Eastern Standard Time, standard meaning actually f five standard meridians over from UTC, and EDT is 5 minus 5 plus 1, daylight savings time. It's very strange. Uh, time and time again, you'll probably hear me calling it daylight stupid time because it doesn't do anything useful and it just makes things more complicated. All right, moving on. So the thing here is that's Philadelphia. Philadelphia is exactly on a standard meridian, 75 degrees. However, State College is not. State College is has a longitude of 77.9 degrees west, or negative 77.9 degrees, if we're going to use our standard conventions, where the prime meridian is 0 degrees longitude. Anything west of the prime meridian is negative sign. Anything east of the prime meridian is positive sign. I'm including the latitude here because I did a basic search on Google, just like I was talking about, to find the latitude and longitude. And notice how I don't have 16 decimal places. Uh, there's a certain degree of significance of the digits that we, that we are using. And for the most point, going out to the tenth or the one hundredth is going to be just fine for us in solar calculations. So for now, I'm just using it out to the tenth decimal place. So again, I have UTC minus 5 hours because we're doing a major longitude shift across five standard meridians to the west. Then I'm going to subtract an additional 12 minutes, or 0.2 hours, from that standard meridian. And that's because the sun keeps on moving. The earth is rotating, the beam of the sun keeps on moving, and needs 12 more minutes to reach Penn State from Philadelphia. So the Earth is rotating four, four minutes every one degree, right? And what we're going to find here is that if I check that difference of standard longitude of minus 75 degrees minus the negative 77.9 degrees, I'm going to get a positive 2.9 or 3 degrees of angle of angular displacement that's positive three degrees which means that if I look at my conversion here I will have my time displacement in terms of negative sine of four minutes per degree standard minus local longitude this is actually a correction that you should note for equation 6.9 in the textbook it was initially printed as positive so it is actually negative and that means that we will get a time of negative 12 minutes. I'm going to do another correction right there. Of negative 4 minutes times approximately 3 degrees. And we have the degree symbols are going to cancel out. Units cancel. I'm left with 12 minutes of change. All right. Now that's a problem that you want to work through and think about uh, and uh, we can come back to that and answer questions in class or in conference notes uh, on the forums. I wanted to express something here also, is that, you know, that, that idea that longitude and time, and here time is as the hour angle, are related, is historically significant. You know, this is one of those things, it's like solar just drags along rich stories, rich histories that are amazing and that you should really uh, take time to dig into. And one of those, one of those that I would strongly recommend is to go out and uh, check out the book Longitude by uh, Davis Sobel. Uh, the book by Sobel is about the history of finding out how to build 
as well, essentially, a marine chronometer, a clock, but this would be something that goes far beyond what you and I would think of as a clock, but, but a, a marine chronometer was a standard time measurement instrument that kept standard ticks of minutes and seconds and hours as you were sailing across the Atlantic and the Pacific. Because finding latitude by the stars, say, or, or otherwise, is, is relatively easy. Finding longitude while you're on land is also relatively easy, but finding longitude while you're on a boat during the shipping industry, and then we're talking about the 1700s here, was extremely hard and it actually led to uh, things called dead reckoning where you would record by log books where you thought you were based on last sightings of land. So a lot of the shipping industry and, and commerce and, and everything was dependent upon locking down the connection between time and longitude. And so uh, what happened was there was a long, uh, there were many awards in, in different countries of who could figure out a way to build a timekeeping inst instrument, a constant timekeeping instrument that would work in the ocean, uh, you know, while at sea. And this was uh, uh, finally uh, determined by John Harrison, who I'm uh, placing a picture here from Wikipedia, along with his uh, original, one of his original uh, marine chronometers. And the interesting thing here goes back to something that I want you to keep in mind, is that um, we built measurement devices to measure time and to connect our time and space relationships. And we built it because we really valued that ability to know exactly where we were in longitude so that we could move commerce and, and, and have trade and, and uh, wealth uh, distributed around. The interesting thing here is, remember in the past I've told you that there are not a lot of really effective or really widely distributed measurement devices for measuring the irradiance of the sun. We do have them, they're called pyranometers, but they're just not used as readily as everyday devices. Now is the time to really be thinking about those things, because at one time there were people who were just looking to make a clock that would work and connect time and space together. And we use all of those relationships of time and space together now to do Google Maps, to connect ourselves together by satellite, to map uh, courses across space, across uh, ships. It's a really amazing uh, thing. And so I'm just saying, longitude and time connected together tightly. Check it out in the book, Longitude. Okay, moving on. So, so far... We have covered daylight savings time correction. We did a brief correction that it's uh, it is a one hour edition. We've corrected. We've uh, done a brief demonstration of longitudinal correction. Longitudinal correction is the number of time zones or standard meridians over that we've had, and then we did a, the minor correction of longitudinal correction of clock time to solar time, where you know, the number of minutes that I have to wait for the sun to go from Philadelphia to arrive finally at State College. Now we, we were missing one chunk, and that piece is the time correction because of the wobble of the Earth. Okay? So the Earth has a little bit of a wobble on its axis, and that little bit of a wobble on its axis delivers one more correction that we need to do. So I've, I've covered three ways that we correct for time from our watches to our clock and from our clock to our watches. And the third one is this one, analemma time correction. So the analemma, what is that? The analemma is what we call this crazy kind of tilted infinity sign is what it looks like, or figure eight it seems to look like. And we correct it using what we call the equation of time, or ET here. So the analemma is what you would get if you took one of those constant time measurement devices, one of those marine chronometers from uh, Harrison, and you took a picture of the sky, say, at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, every day for the entire year. The picture of the sun would trace this strange lopsided infinity symbol, and that symbol is called the analemma. And if you look on old maps, and if you look on old... Uh, globes, in fact, 
you will find pictures of analemmas on the side of them. They are time correction devices that are directly tied with time and space relationships. So draw a line through the middle of that and you remove the wobble. Your watch is the problem. The solar time does not care about the wobble of the Earth. The solar time means solar noon is when the sun is at the the apex in the sky. However, your clock keeps constant time steps and we have to correct from that. So, in order to correct for that, we need to know the day number. We need to find a coefficient b, right? And, and it's just arbitrarily b. Uh, the coefficient b is going to be the day number n minus 1 times 360 degrees divided by 365 days. Then we're going to drop that into equation 6.11. It's a rather long equation. It's an equation that you want to code. You do not want to put this into a calculator. You want to write this up as a piece of code where you enter in n, n, and it then modifies b, which modifies the equation of time. What you get is a deviation from zero some by plus or minus 15 to 16 minutes and that's the wobble and so that analemma that I just drew up on the upper left I'm drawing again or I'm having plotted again as an analemma on an, just an xy axis I've stretched it out across the days of the year and you see that I have a big loop and then a small loop and a small loop and then another big loop and the interesting thing here with the analemma is the analemma and the loops and the bumps do not tie in with the solstices or the equinoxes. They are not connected to that. It is a different phenomena. So these loops need to be calculated separately. And you still have 15 minutes uh, for every uh, 60, or you know, for every hour, you know, excuse me, you still have 60 minutes per every hour, or, or um, in this case, make the correction that 15 minutes would be 0.25 hours in digital form. So you're looking at a number difference that's going to be about 0.25. So if you start doing an analemma calculation and you get values of 0.5 or higher or 0.4 or higher, something has gone wrong in your equation. It's just a general recommendation to uh, know the scale of things when you're doing these calculations. It's also a recommendation that it, when you are coding to not lump every step of your equation together when you're first figuring it out. There's great value in writing a snippet of code, checking it to see that it works more or less, and then adding it to your larger piece of, of scripting uh, to solve the problems in the homeworks. All right. So time correction. Using the uh, whole package, the whole four parts, which are the longitude correction by the standard meridian, the longitude correction from, the, from your standard meridian to your local time, that's two longitude corrections, the check for daylight savings time, and then there is the wobble of the Earth, the equation of time. So we've got my time correction listed here with just the two. I didn't, uh, or just the two, so the uh, T lambda in, is lumping together my UTC major standard meridian corrections plus my local meridian correction. Those are both longitudinal corrections, but that's two of them, with the equation of time, which is the wobble. I've got in parentheses daylight stupid time because daylight savings may or may not happen in the country that you're doing your research in. I just visited Peru, and they do not have daylight savings time, and also find it to be a strange phenomena that America is passing on to other people. All right, so then, that equation is, is what we're going to be tying together. The What are we listing here? That the equation of time, oh yes, does need to be converted to hour units. Uh, so if we're going to start in the base of hours, we're going to make sure that uh, our, uh, a, any minute-based conversion is converted into hours, which is why I did that 15 minutes to 0.25 hours in the prior board. I'm going to use uh, equations 6.14 and 6.15. I'm going to note that I've got a correction of minus 4 instead of positive 4 in that equation. Make sure that you uh, note that down. That is an error that's noted in the errata 
uh, document, the error document for the book, uh, for the first edition of the book. And then I've got a representation of the solar time. So essentially, what we're talking about here is, what if you have your watch, and you need to convert that time to solar time? Because in reality, what we really want is to get everything into solar time. Because the solar time, all of our computational equipment can just eat up and, and deliver great results. Watch time is what messes people up. And it's what actually is useful to us to get to work on time and to coordinate phone calls, but it doesn't help when we're talking about the sun. Just like daylight savings time doesn't help anybody who's a farmer because the cows need to be milked when they need to be milked. The plants grow when the sun comes up. Things like that. Daylight savings time does nothing for the farming industry. It actually just makes things more challenging. All right, so next we're going to be talking about linking together these ideas of time with irradiance because the sun moves throughout our sky and that irradiance relative to time is going to pull us back to the goal of solar design and thinking about cosine projection effects, reducing the angle of incidence, and uh, reducing... Uh, shading effects in, in the upcoming lectures. All right, thanks for your time.